ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to what show is this? The Haunted Heart Podcast. The Haunted Heart Podcast, your weekly trash podcast, your spooky podcast, uh, the podcast where you get things like Florida Man episodes. But then you also get things like corpse birth. (laughs) Yes. I actually, I believe the term was coffin birth. That's true. But same thing. Same thing. It, I think coffin birth is like the soft term. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. the coffin's not birthing anything. No. Um, a corpse is. I feel like coffin birth was the more poetic, like the PC. Artful, yeah. artful term for it. Yep. You get all of that here. And you do. You never know what you're going to get. No. You, you might don't. get a lighthearted romp. You might get fucking wounded. Who knows? We Eternally. don't even know. <laughs> really and truly. We don't. (laughs) So we get to start off this episode in a lovely way by inducting two brand new members to the Heathen Temple. Yes. And for those of you who aren't aware of what that is, if you're new and listening, these are people that have uh, decided to leave a little coin on that dress, honey, uh, and support us on our Patreon, which you can find at patreon.com slash the haunted heart. Yes, definitively so, in fact. You questioned me on that shit. I did. I will never question you ever again. You should question me a lot, often. No, I will. You you really should. No, I I will most definitely. (laughs) No, most definitely. Uh, I'll see you there. So... First, we are going to welcome, oh, and if I guess if you are new, I guess uh, we didn't explain this last time and we probably should have because there are probably people who are listening who are like, what the fuck are they lighting candles for? We have a practice every time we get a new family member uh, on the Patreon, we light a candle and do an invocation. Um, so when we say the name of our new family member, we're sending health, wealth, happiness, good vibes only. Yes. Uh, to that person, and we as a community are uh, are sending love and light their way. Yes. Uh, so as you're listening, if you want to intensify that intention, you could do that as well. Yes. For your fellow family members. Of course. Which would be wonderful, and that's how we change the world, folks. Mm-hmm. So we are welcoming today Kelly G to the Haunted Heart Harem. Yes. And we also have Rachel S., who will be joining our Haunted Heart Harem as well. Your candles are lit, our intentions are set, and we are so happy to have you as part of the Haunted Heart family. Thank you so much to all of our Patreon supporters. We really, really appreciate you guys. We truly couldn't do it without you, and we're just so happy that you guys are, you know, with us in this. We're in it together. We're in it together. We're all in this together. No, Katie, we're not going to do that. Can we get sued for that? Probably. I think it's like only like under 13 seconds you can get sued for. Do you think? Maybe, but I'm not going to test the big D. You know what I mean? <laughs> What's the big D? They're pretty aggressive. I don't even want to oh. say. I don't even want to say oh, the name. Oh, shit. You can't even say the name. Yep. We talked they, about it last week when we were talking about Florida. Oh, yeah. It's where they they're are located. Pretty, they are pretty aggressive. Pretty aggressive with them copyright That's insane, lawsuits. right? Like mm-hmm. you would think it'd be this place of like magic and creativity no but. it's a place of lawsuits and fucking copyright infringement for mm-hmm. sure for fucking sure yeah I don't we're gonna have think- to redact those last like 10 seconds of the of the <laughs> podcast i don't even think you can like you can't even dress up as any of the characters if really you're there. yeah if you're if you're like at- visiting yeah like i don't even think like you can really because i feel like people cosplay no i don't not think you're there at- you're not allowed to. Oh, that's weird. I think like there's a loophole for like, you know, little kids and like princess outfits. But for the most like you, I'm fairly certain. You- what if there wasn't? What if they were like, we're going to sue your fucking child because she dressed up like Cinderella and she's not. You know who owns Cinderella? Us. 
Not your child. Not you. Your child is not a Disney princess. That's okay. true. Well, luckily, I don't look like any of the fucking Disney princesses, so I don't have a problem with that. I love seeing the alternate Disney princesses yeah. that you get sometimes. Those are fucking rad. The goth ones mm-hmm. and like the scene, like punk Disney princess. I'm in. I'm into that. I think Ariel. There's like one, like I think they call it hipster Ariel, but it's it's totally emo Ariel. Yeah, because she's got like tattoos and lip piercings and whatever. Um, that's that's my favorite. Yeah, yeah, that is awesome. Uh, oh, exciting news. Um. The Adams Family trailer just dropped today. It will be releasing. Um, yes, it will be releasing uh, in October. Oh, super cool. excited for that! The animated today version. when we're recording this, or today when the episode drops? Uh, when we recorded it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, looks really good. I'm really excited to see it. And what's really awesome um, is if you look at or when they're playing the trailer, they start with these little stick figure cartoon drawings of like, and they're like, "This is what your typical American family looks like," and it's just like whatever but then it's like and also this and then it shows like different families so there's like two moms two dads there's like a single parent there's like interracial families like drawn in little cartoons and then it's like and then you have like some really unique families and then that's when the adams family comes up it's amazing that's cool it's props to the adams family for being inclusive y'all yeah that's awesome yeah that's very cool. I haven't seen it yet. I, I should probably watch it after this. Mm-hmm. Somebody didn't fucking message it to me. Well, it was posted in our group, so. Oh, uh, true. <laughs> I got distracted with the new, um, like the new American Horror Story stuff. Oh, yeah. Because that looks, okay, here's the thing. Y'all know I got issues with AHS. Y'all know I have forever issues with Ryan Murphy. I truly think that he has good ideas, but I wish that he would like, have the idea and get the fuck out of the way and let somebody who knows how to direct horror direct it because mm-hmm. we get this motherfucker gets me with these good ideas and like good plot premises and then we get halfway through a season and then it's just going in too many different directions and it just completely falls apart for me because it's like you have like five different storylines that are or sometimes even more than that that are running like 100 miles an hour at all different directions and then it just pulls the the season apart for me. Yeah, and then like they try to tie it up like right. too quick. Then the they end. try to tie it up in a bow at the end of their whatever, like 12 episodes, is it? Usually, yeah. Yeah. Like, and it just doesn't work that way. But this, like, this season, mm, they got me, y'all. They put a they put a slasher twist on it. Y'all know I love a freaking slasher. Like I love and I love the idea of like messing with like, I love the tongue-in-cheek sort of approach to it. I don't know if he'll take that route. Uh, route? Route. <laughs> I don't know if he'll take that route. Are you Canadian? Yeah. I, I, it, it went to a weird Canadian place. Canadian. Yeah, I'm a little stuffy today, so I might get a little Canadian, but it's fine. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Um, I think it'll be interesting. It's called 1984. Which... Okay. Which was not the best year in horror. So if no. you remember, we uh, just recently did a two-part series on 80s horror. All up in those 80s horror goods. And uh, when we discussed 1984, it really was not the best year. It wasn't. Uh, I think our, you know, one of the major players that you had coming out of that year was uh, um, uh, a Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, yeah. And then maybe, the original? That yeah. was the original. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, it really wasn't a, a big player that year. So I'm interested mm-hmm. to see like if there's some inspiration taken from um, from the movies, of from the horror in that year. I'm worried. I'm worried for... So I'm interested that we're doing a slasher vibe. Uh, I can't... It's not that, like, groundbreaking or revolutionary, I feel like. Because, I mean, we did have, like, Final Girls. And we've we've had a lot of movies that are kind of, like, playing with the traditional take on a slasher film. Not to say that you... Not to say that it shouldn't be done again. Um, And I'm excited that that was chosen. But I'm also very worried because I feel like calling it 1984 is, like... I don't know. I'm just, I'm concerned that what we're going to get is like this, like weird stereotypical, like complete whitewashing of 80s horror and it's going to, and I'm going to hate it. 
It you can know, go either way. I need it. I I just need them to have done their research. I need them to have watched the movies. I need them to have like steeped themselves in fucking Peter Gabriel and like fucking electronica and mm-hmm. just live that life. I need them to have alienated everyone in their family, every production assistant and director and anything on this yeah. series. I need them to have all alienated their families. Yeah, my thing with American Horror Story is that they've always had really great promo material. Yeah. Like the promo material like is usually more exciting than the actual season to me. Um, yeah, that's which, why I still, even if I don't watch the season, I still watch all of the promo material just because it's it's really good. Like it's, and I don't know if they have different directors, like. Like someone in charge of that specifically. Right, like maybe that's it. And it's just like the artistic director for the promos is just a fucking powerhouse. But oh, like, sure. can we give him a show or her or whatever? Like, yeah. Can that person get a show? Can that person direct the show? Like, <laughs> because, yeah. damn. Yeah, so we're really excited for that. Lots of good stuff coming. Um, and yeah, we're, we're, we're really excited for it. So, should um, be cool. But we're not going to spend this whole episode talking about American Horror Story. I mean, Story I could. Or... I mean, we could. <laughs> we could. We really honestly could. Um, but we actually, um, I gave Katie a break. <laughs> yeah, girl, because it's tax season and I'm struggling. If you work in finance, I'm sorry for you right now. Every tax season, there's a uh, a standoff between CPAs and financial advisors. And it's like one of those things that like people who don't work in finance have no idea about. But like we are literally fighting in the fucking streets right now. So also, we're not talking about CPAs and <laughs> finances. It's on true. This, episode. this is not the tax episode. That was day job corner. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> but no, no, I need because you to I am on. struggling. Kenny gave me the week off. And so he is going to tell me a ghost story. I'm going to tell you a couple of ghost stories. Just a couple. So we actually received uh, an email from I feel like every time you say we actually received an email, it feels like we don't receive emails ever. (laughs) We've been waiting. We were watching the (laughs) inbox and then it came through. We celebrated. We called our moms. (laughs) Uh, <laughs> we no. got one email. <laughs> we actually do get email. Not all of it is junk. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, carry the only on. The email we get is the one that says error uploading to freaking SoundCloud. Fucking SoundCloud. One day, you guys. <laughs> one day we'll be on SoundCloud. Uh, Maybe. Let us know. Send us At this email. point, no. At this point, if you fucking want us on SoundCloud, you better email me because I'm in a standoff with them too. I don't like them neither. <laughs> Fuck no. y'all making us pay for hosting separately. <laughs> no, let us know. If you prefer to listen on SoundCloud as opposed to whatever you're currently listening on. That's then, true. Definitely let, then let, 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 us, let know. us know. We, we may consider it. Uh, <laughs> so um, Anyway, what the fuck are we talking about today? <laughs> we'll get to it eventually. Um, no, so we got an email from... I feel like listener. the way that we introduce our topics is like a drunk man trying to like get it in you know what i'm saying like he's just all over it (laughs) he's he's it's so he's just kind of poking all around the general vicinity until he gets there so i'm gonna sidebar the (laughs) sidebar of the sidebar do you have a personal Um, story no i don't but i remember um there was a, a group on facebook and they were talking about like uh if people who listen to podcasts appreciate banter or not. Oh, and yeah. it's literally split right down the middle. <laughs> like you have the people that really enjoy the crazy, like shooting the shit banter or whatever. Like and then you have right them now. people who are hitting that fucking 15 seconds forward button. Yeah. And then you have the heartless cold people who Hit don't it. want anything in life. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm totally kidding. I don't I? think they're here. Um, I think we lost them like several episodes, <laughs> right. like, like 60 episodes back. Either 60 episodes back or they've skipped it by now. So I can say what the fuck I want to, right? <laughs> it's true. Exactly. Those cold, heartless people, uh, emotionless, um, unempathetic people who can't um, enjoy, you know, a good conversation. Me but just anyway. poking around, poking <laughs> around. <laughs> so anyway, um, 
I don't even know where I was going with that, but I just remember that being a, a hot button topic and I got involved. <laughs> that was inside the podcaster's studio corner. <laughs> so yes, um, finally, <laughs> we got an email again. Oh God. <laughs> for the third time. Yes. Um, from a gentleman who uh, goes by the name of Andrew Dexter. Uh, and he, it's titled The Ghost of Gladstone Villa. And he says that this is a genuine case that occurred in the former mining town of Bargoid in the Carefully County Borough of the South Wales Valley, UK. From 1969. Yay, we love the UK. We have yes, UK listeners. We Mwah. do. We love you all. Yep. Hello to the UK. From 1969 to the summer of 1978, my family, our friends, and I experienced phenomena that simply defied rational and scientific explanation. I wouldn't share this if I couldn't back it up without a thorough research, and you can find a much more detailed telling of our experience if you search The Ghost of Gladstone Villa. I would be delighted if you could tell this on a show. Thank you both sincerely. Best wishes, Andrew Dexter. So, first of all, thank you, Andrew, for shooting us an email. We really appreciate it. Um, and this is what Andrew has to say. So, are you ready for some ghost stories? I'm ready. I'm I'm excited. It's like someone it's else is telling me a ghost story through you right now. Okay, that's scary. Uh, and I mean, <laughs> but for real, it's like a it's. I, I'm, I'm a conduit. I'm excited. You are. You're a Ooh, conduit. I'm a conduit. Um. Yes. So. So the story goes. My family were my maternal grandparents, William, Bill, Higgins, and his wife, Rita. They had one child, a daughter, Carolyn Higgs, who is, of course, my mother. My mother worked at the local bakehouse in Baldwin Street on a regular day shift. It was there she met my father, Douglas. He was from Aberbargoid, and that is probably not correct. <laughs> Wait, how's it spelled? I want to try. Aber, so it's Bargoid. Bargoid. Bar- bargoid? Oh. Bargoid. And okay. then there's an added aber in front of it. Aber bargoid? Aber, a- aber bargoid. Aber, aber bargoid. All right. There we go. And he worked the night shift regular, but he stayed around to chat with my mom. Ooh. Ooh. They dated for three years before they married on April 1st, 1968. My parents didn't get a place of their own and stayed with my maternal grandparents at Gladstone Villa in Cardiff Road. I was born at Carefully Miners Hospital Hospital uh, on the 24th of August. Oh, hey. All right. Okay. <laughs> That's my mom's birthday. Yeah. Uh, it was soon after I was born that my mother, Caroline, um, noticed the activity and says, and he proceeds to say that it started off slowly with gentle tappings around the home and then it increased oh that's just asmr that's just like <laughs> surround sound ASMR. i don't think they had asmr oh don't worry then. about that don't worry about that that's just 4d asmr it's a new thing it's really hot in la i, I don't i hear okay I, I'm, I'm pretty sure they weren't doing asmr <laughs> uh in the 60s late 60s early 70s but okay uh my mother said that the family were down um, was downstairs when they heard what sounded like somebody jumping from the attic onto the ceiling. Naturally thinking that they had a break-in, they went to see what was going on, but when they got there, they saw nobody. But the hatch to the attic was open. Mm-mm. Nah, that's when you... Put a lock on it. <laughs> get out. Put a lock right up on it. Whatever it was eventually occupied itself in the main bedroom, which incidentally belonged to my grandparents, and it didn't take long to make its presence felt. Every evening, footsteps could be heard in the main bedroom when we'd all be downstairs. There was some minor poltergeist activity. One day, my mother Caroline went upstairs into that bedroom to get my father Douglas ready for work on the night shift when she was confronted by a scary sight. She saw my father sleeping on the bed, with the ironing board over his torso. When he woke up, he was astonished to find what was going on. And at one point, my dad suspected that my grandfather Bill of doing some of it, but he soon realized it wasn't Bill doing it at all. Wait, so what was happening? He apparently... He was asleep with the ironing board? Like, he was just holding it? Are we sure he wasn't drunk? (laughs) I don't know. Um, But... 
he does say sleeping on the bed with the ironing board over his torso. So I'm not sure. Interesting. Okay. So my parents separated in 1972 and he left Gladstone Villa. They eventually divorced on the 25th of April, uh, 1975. Uh, the Bay City Rollers were number one in the charts with, with Bye Bye Baby. How ironic is that? I love, I love the atmosphere we're getting. Right. Could we? I wonder if we could play that song without getting sued. <laughs> Maybe I don't know, but I don't. I don't know how it goes, or I'd sing it. Bye, bye, baby. That's not. Try it. not to. That's though. not it. Let's let's not. The Bay City Rolls had a big hit though. I don't know what it was. It wasn't that. So okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> now he says that it wasn't because of the activity at Gladstone Villa that uh, his father left. Um, it was just a breakdown in the marriage. So there's that. And that is all too real of a ghost story right yes, there. It is. <laughs> That's all you need. That was a breakdown okay. in the marriage. The end. <laughs> oh, Katie and I both know that very mm-hmm. well. That's a ghost story we're both uh, haunted by. True. <laughs> so, as I he's ghost. Oh, it's the other D word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're I, damaged people. <laughs> Lots of lots of D's. That yeah. End up. D. Do you see a? This is the D episode. Do you see a um, a chain of events that occur? Here? <laughs> um. So he says, as I got older, I began to experience the activity for myself. I too would witness the poltergeist activity. I saw the electrical cables being pulled by unseen forces from upstairs, and I actually saw the lights going off and on. Though this didn't happen all the time. We mainly heard footsteps in the main bedroom every evening, sometimes during the day when we'd all be downstairs watching television. One of us would turn uh, the volume down to hear it more clearly. And I remember my grandfather Bill looking up to the ceiling and pointing and he'd say, he's by here. He's by there now, trying to point out where it was exactly. It got so bad that we slept downstairs with the lights on all night. Only my grandfather Bill would sleep in the main bedroom. Ivy France was a family friend uh, to my grandmother, Rita. She didn't believe us when she was told, um, when we told her that Gladstone Villa was haunted. I still remember Ivy going into the main bedroom, checking it out and saying it was the vibration from the traffic outside causing it. But her opinion was soon to change when Ivy experienced it for herself. It was then Ivy suggested um, a local medium she knew of by the name of John Matthews. When John arrived, he started by asking the family questions. Then he challenged the spirit by knocking on the ceiling, and it immediately knocked back at him. At some point, John went into a trance to try and make contact. He failed to get a name, but he later confirmed the obvious that there was indeed a presence there and that it was an earthbound spirit. A local priest by the name of Graham Jones uh, was also called to Gladstone Villa. After a few prayers, he blessed the property, and he duly left, and it was quiet for a few short months, but it did return with a vengeance, and this time, it showed itself. One night, my mother, grandfather, and I were watching television. My grandfather was reading a book on the... Now, I'm going to have to apologize because he writes Seti, S-E-T-T-E-E, and I don't know what that means, Uh, so... Why set. are you apologizing? Because I don't know what it means. I don't <laughs> know if it's, it's something a horrible. set. I don't know if you say it's set. I'm just going to say on the set. The settee. <laughs> the set. Isn't that like a piece of furniture? Maybe. I, I keep wanting to think of like a television set, but I'm not sure. My mother just so happened to look to her left towards my grandmother, and what she saw was a full solid figure of a monk standing behind the set my grandmother was on. Near the doorway, we didn't see it as we were otherwise occupied, but my mother later described it in detail uh, and says that he was in a typical monk's habit, complete with a hood over the head, so she didn't see its face. My mother and grandfather also claimed to have heard a baby crying in the main bedroom, but as I didn't hear this, I took very little notice at the time. We had the ghost for so long that my grandmother Rita gave it a nickname. She called it Johnny. We left the property in the summer of 1978 when two local businessmen bought the property and Gladstone Villa was eventually converted into a hotel and its name changed to the Reds Park Hotel and it has, uh, and that has since closed down uh, and has now become a set of flats or apartments. I do know what that means. (laughs) (laughs) 
Uh, he goes on to say that he did some thorough research into the history of Gladstone Villa and the Carter Road area and learned some interesting things from newspaper archives at the library. He says that uh, he discovered that a newly married couple called the uh, Kimiettes lived there in 1924. Their names were Michael and Evelyn. They had a son, Elvin, who died at Gladstone Villa in 1924, mm-hmm. um, as stated in the Western Mail of that year in the notices section, uh, which he believes explains the baby crying hmm. uh, that his uh, fa- that his family had heard there. He also discovered that there was a monastery in Bargoid, and the remains of it can be seen in Baldwin Street, which is coincidentally where his parents met. And that there is also a priest hide directly opposite Gladstone Villa in a building called the RAFA, an an old farm that dates back to the 17th century. So interesting. So it was kind of like the place was. Well, we did have the one uh, alleged death of the child. Yes. uh, The baby. Yes. Right. But then the monk stuff just seems like it's adjacent to that property. Right. Right? It was never actually occupied by monks. It's just kind of near a monk's hide. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure that there could be some sort of residual spirit energy somewhere. Because if it was next to there, like, you know, uh, he went on. He did um, go on to say that there are are supposedly lots of, like, um, old, like, underground, like, caves that could be or like Ooh, passageways that could okay. be connecting things so um, so it's like an us situation yeah <laughs> and as we yeah no i just I, well i do think it's interesting that the parents met in the same area that the like old uh monks community was baldwin right. street or whatever so like that is kind of cool that could be um something like a spirit maybe that followed them attached mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. Um, one of the relatives and maybe followed them. I'm not really sure. I don't hmm. consider myself to be a paranormal expert, but, um, you know, that's what I could gather from it. So. Interesting. Yeah. It was a really interesting story. So again, thank you for sending us, uh, for sending us that. And so that actually, uh, inspired, uh, my main ghost story for this evening. Hmm. So I decided to keep it a little local for okay. you today. Okay. <laughs> not local as in here local. Not like in the room that we're currently in. Mm. <laughs> and if you'll turn around. No. And, if you'll, <laughs> and if you'll take a turn back, you'll see the headless woman right behind you. No, don't do it. See, you're going to fucking... I'm going to fuck myself be, up yeah, right now because yeah. then she's just going to fucking start jerking you her can't. fucking body around and knock the mic over and then there's going to be just a fucking shit show. That's really edit. just every episode, but... Yeah. Nah, chaos magic. Don't say that shit. <laughs> no, we're not going to do that. No, it's I decided... Gerard Butler behind me. <laughs> Looking good. I don't oh, even yeah. like him. Why did I say him? Like I don't, your mother likes him. My mom like used to have a crush on him like five years ago when he was like a thing, your or maybe mother even was seven speaking years ago. Hundred percent. I was being possessed by Scarlet for sure. She must be thinking about him right now. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. So uh, no, I decided to keep it um, local in the sense that my next ghost story uh, is also going to be in Wales. Oh, okay. So this is a little something for the UK. Yes. So we've traveled over there and we're just going to stay there for a minute. Okay. You know, enjoy our uh, company. I hope they enjoy our company. Mm. <laughs> we're going to enjoy their company scoop is what up I'm trying a little, to say. Uh, scoop up a little two for one UK ghost stories. All right. Okay. Yes. So I kind of um, started researching this because of the name. Of this place. So it's called Scarred Mountain. But it's it's spelled S-K-I-R-R-I-D. So it kind of looks like how we might say, don't get scared. Scared. <laughs> but it's called. Don't but get that's, scared. Yep, exactly. That's how you would uh, think you could pronounce it. But it's Scarred Mountain. But you'd be wrong. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, you would. So buckle up. Because this one's a doozy. Okay. All right. So if you decide to take a visit through the south of Wales, particularly in the area of, I'm not even going to try to pronounce it, um, 
Lavengale Krukorny. You know, that didn't sound bad to me. But say it with a British accent. Lavengale Krukorny. Perfect. Awesome. Totally legitimate. <laughs> you may find yourself at the base of Scarred Mountain. The name Scarred comes from the Welsh word for shattered or split. Aptly named as the mountain itself is divided in two. Legend states that over 2,000 years ago, at the moment of the crucifixion of Christ, a great storm was conjured and a bolt of lightning struck at the mountain, causing it to split. Because of this, many people believed the mountain to be a holy place, and if you were to travel there today, you would find the ruins of a chapel dedicated to St. Michael. You would also find a stone structure called the Devil's Table. And in the 19th century, you would find people traveling to this table to leave some coin for a witch in exchange for advice or for magic. Hang on. Is that not, like, our Patreon? <laughs> right. Why did you think I used the word coin? <laughs> leave some coin leave on some the coin devil's in table. In exchange for some banter. <laughs> Locals would often claim to hear the witch roaring like a bull in the middle of the night. Also kind of like fucking Katie. (laughs) (laughs) So, as we can tell, this land has a history rooted in legend and magic, but also death. At the base of this mountain, you will find the Scarred Mountain Inn. This inn claims to be one of the oldest public houses in Wales, with documentation going back as far as the 12th century. As we all know, public houses weren't just a place to get sloshed out of your fucking mind, to forget the fact that you're living in the 12th century. They were also centers for public meetings, including but not limited to criminal trials. In 1100, two brothers were standing trial at the inn. One was accused of stealing sheep. The other was accused of violent robbery. The brother who stole the sheep was sentenced to death by hanging. The other was only given nine months imprisonment. Wait, the violent robbery mm-hmm. one only got nine months in prison? Mm-hmm. Seems a little odd. Yeah. Seems a little like we're too protective of the sheep. Uh, yeah. Seems like maybe we had an inappropriate relationship with the sheep <laughs> that was maybe coloring some of our feelings towards the law. There's, po- I, I, I'm not sure. I'm, I mean, I'm, I, I don't know at this point. The violent robbery, was it perpetrated against a human or a sheep? Was it robbery of a sheep? I don't know. They were brothers, so I'm not sure if this was like together and then like the one guy stole the sheep, the other one like violently robbed. I don't know. Interesting. Anyway, one of them ended up dead. All right. Over 180 executions are said to have taken place during the history of the inn. A popular story is that the notorious quote unquote hanging Judge Jeffries who was noted for his uh, particular interest in rope play, uh, had been a part of the trials, uh, but some of the dates don't quite coincide, so that's a little bit dicey. But from what I believe, the local landowner, a gentleman by the name of Squire Arnold, was the one who presided over the hearings. He was noted as being a particularly cruel man who dealt swift verdicts of death to many of the 180 plus highwaymen, robbers, thieves, and anyone who may have crossed him. So the executions were held on the second floor landing and the prisoners were kept in a holding cell nearby. The hangman would tie the rope up over a thick wooden beam at the top of the stairwell and the condemned would then be pushed off the landing. Now, this wasn't like in, like in more developed areas where they had tall gallows, which would snap your neck uh, instantly. Here, you were literally just dangling from the second floor. So more often than not, you fucking choke to death. Slowly, violently, horribly. Yeah, well, there's a lot. There's actually a lot that goes into the act of hanging. Um, their, uh, last podcast on the left did a really good series on, uh, executions. I I think it was actually just one episode, but, uh, they talked about hanging and there's a lot of science that goes into measuring exactly what the correct length of the rope should be. Cause like you said, if it's too short, it's too much pressure. And when they hang you, your head just pops off like a pop top. 
basically. Uh, yeah. But it sounds like if it was a unique setup that maybe that, because the, the height from which you're being dropped makes a big difference too. So if that was kind of like different, if it wasn't exactly like standard, then I could see where no, executioners this- would have a lot of trouble like getting that rope length exactly right. Because a lot goes into it. There's the height from which you're being dropped. Mm-hmm. There's the weight of the person, the dimensions of the person. Yeah. The strength of their neck. There's lots of factors. Yeah, but if it's it. if if the rope is too long, essentially, then you just hang there and basically suffocate. Like you, you suffocate to death. Yeah, I think that's what was happening because um, with the way it was described, the rope was tied up at like one of the very top rafters on top of the stairwell, mm-hmm. and they were being pushed off of like the second landing. So it was yeah. like, you know, they were literally just dangling there right. until they were. Mm. You know, and was that intentional? I'm not sure, or was it just? I'm not sure. Like a shitty setup. I feel like it's probably a shitty setup. I feel like I some... just feel like they hung so many people there that like somebody could have like looked into it and been like, mm, "Is there a less traumatizing way to do this?" Didn't they have guns back then? Like, <laughs> just fucking shoot. They somebody. may not have. They may not have. If it was, you fucking knife me in my fucking jugular. <laughs> <laughs> like it's fine. literally make it fun else. do like a magic act make it like fun. cut him cut did him you, in two like did you, you know, literally just <laughs> have I a monkey Katie. like rip their face off like you know like just do something i am so glad you weren't alive back then you're like the drunken winch in the background who was like ah let me show you how it's done <laughs> make uh, it fun yeah Oh, uh, but I feel like that's kind of what happened, though. I feel like there was some drunken guy in the background who was like, eh, just string them up. Yeah. Just no, I mean, that was like everybody in that time period. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's what I imagine. Oh. <laughs> just a crowd full of that. <laughs> yes. Totally fun. Um, talk about a good Friday night, right? Mm. The last hanging occurred in the mid 1600s. And the gentleman's name was uh, John Crothers, who coincidentally was also sentenced to death for stealing sheep. God damn, they love their sheep in this place. <laughs> what region is this? The South of Wales, girl. South That's all of I Wales, can tell man. You. Y'all love y'all's fucking sheep. I would just not. Is that steal still true sheep. today? Is that like a thing? Like, what's going on? What's going on with the sheep? I would just not. St- just don't steal What's sheep. What's the deal? Is this like a William Wallace situation? I can take it. I'm Scottish. I understand. <laughs> I understand. You, you've been out there working, herding sheep. You've been out there by yourself, long day in the saddle, working them sheep. Why are And we you s- just start to see one in the back, eyeing you all pretty. But why are we stealing the sheep if we know that death is the freaking penalty for you know, it? You know, sometimes... It's like the Florida Sometimes man love is more important than death, Kenny. Of the 12th century. Sometimes sheep love is more important. Mm, okay, and now we're weird. <laughs> now we're at that point of we need to turn back around because this is getting too much. Mm-mm-mm. Is there such a thing on the show? I don't um, know. It, very few hard nose. But that might be one of them. Sheep love? I'm, good. <laughs> I'm glad to know. Okay. So, again, coincidentally, because that was just like the first hanging. So, today, obviously, we're not hanging people in the pub. (laughs) We're still not doing that. It's not going on. Thank God. Uh, And the room, which was once a holding cell, is now a storeroom for the pub. But the beam over the stairwell still exists. And you can still see the burns from the rope in the wood to this day. Was it a good idea to leave that up? I don't know. I feel like when we brought, you know, the the commercial contracting company in to do the renovations, we could have just been like, eh, why don't you just knock that? Why don't you just knock that out? Just We don't need that beam. It's not a support <laughs> beam. We can just uh replace it with one of those like weird industrialized ceilings like what they have at Chipotle and oh. everywhere else now because every restaurant looks the same because that would cheap make to sense decorate with that the, way that would make sense with a 12th century inspired decor everywhere is looking like that now I wouldn't be surprised uh yeah so it's a there might be creepy... a Chipotle in that pub now <laughs> there's replaced. actually a Starbucks there let us know <laughs> 
Um, South of Wales people get on it. But from the what I can see of the pictures when I was researching, and we'll post some to our social media, I promise. Um, <laughs> uh, it is pretty like it is pretty creepy looking, mm. like the way that you can see like how the wood has been like like bent. Yeah, and it's like and bowed and like gnarly, and just looks real ominous. Just looks real <laughs> not good. No, not good at all. Um, so that's today, cool. We should do a show there. I would be totally down. Uh, so today, patrons make claims of welts appearing on their necks, mm. feelings of tightness around their necks, and restricted breathing. Items are often misplaced, and glasses often fling themselves and shatter on the ground. One recent guest who stayed in room one upstairs, because there are three rooms Mm -hmm. in the inn that you can stay in. Um, Some, they say that like one to two of them, like are typically more haunted than the other one is. But in this room. Oh, it's like when you go skiing and they have different ratings on the hills. Yeah. There's like the bunny room and then like the triple black bomb room. I'm going to tell you what. Don't think if I didn't have a fucking haunted inn, I wouldn't play that shit up. <laughs> Which one do you want, motherfucker? How how deep do you want it to go? <laughs> exactly. We've got the regular room. Which is, you know, kind of just average. You may or may not see something. That's your, like, your chicken room. And I'd have a little... I'd I'd nail a chicken on the front door. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Uh, And then you have your second level, which is, like, some shit's probably going to go down in the middle of the night, you know? Uh, You're going to wake up to some pictures of you sleeping on your phone. Yes. You're going to feel unsettled. mm -hmm. And then you've got number three, where you're actually fucking having... Fucking tea with ghosts. <laughs> like you're, fu- you just you're, have a nice. They they nice actually service. they nice open tea. in. They do your turn down service for you. Incredible. That's the twist. <laughs> That's the twist. Um. So yes. So one recent guest who stayed in room one upstairs had a very frightening experience in the room's bathroom. This area near. I don't the, like that. I don't know, like that. Don't fuck with me when I'm in the bathroom. Okay, I'm that, here that, for business. That, this is a business room. I'm here to do business and then and then get out. I'm not here to I'm not here to fuck around. Don't mess with me when I'm in the bathroom. I feel like if I was a ghost, I would not mess with people in the bathroom. You'd leave it you'd make sure that they had their privacy still. I'd just be wreaking complete fucking havoc in a house, being a total bitch. And they'd go into the bathroom and I'd be like, okay, you know what? I respect it. <laughs> That's their safe space and you respect it's that. True. It's true. I do. Well, great. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like ghosts don't operate on that level, but okay. So, uh, so she was in uh, the bathroom. Uh, this area near the wall uh, was where Arnold and his magistrates once sat in judgment on their countless prisoners. This female guest was taking a bath when unseen hands pushed her under the water and held her down. Her screams were heard throughout the inn. He is trying to kill me, is what she screamed. Mm-mm. Got her bath time, too. Man, fuck that. She was just trying to relax with a lush, with a bath bomb, trying to get her bath oils on. Yeah, because see, what they did was the where they did the, on that level where they did the, the hearings, it was one just open floor plan. And then I guess when they turned it into an inn, they added a wall. Mm-hmm. And so, and then one of those ended up being like a bathroom. Mm. So anyway, the present manager of the Scarred Inn does not believe in ghosts, but he admits that something is not quite right about the building. His four-year-old grandson didn't counter one of the inn's ghosts. He and his wife had not mentioned anything about the inn's ghostly history to their grandson since he was so young. But one day, he approached his grandpa stating that he needed to use the restroom. The manager pointed out one of the inn's restrooms and told him to use it. Surprised, he saw his grandson return within seconds. He asked the boy why he had not used the restroom, and his grandson told him quickly, The man in the long dress won't let me through the door. Hmm. I didn't let that kid through the door. It was me. (laughs) (laughs) You can't come in. No. So, guests have reported seeing various figures, described as possibly those who had been hanged, and some have even found 
the hangman himself at the foot of their bed. That's not what you want, you know? Mm. I mean, hangmen are people too, but you don't fucking want that. Apparently, the hangman is the most uh, malevolent spirit. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, his presence is felt on Would the stairs. Would have never fucking guessed that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> his his presence is felt um, on the stairwell um, a lot. Um, that's where a lot of people, when they travel up and according... They get the welts. Yeah, that's they get the what, welts. Oh, okay. Yeah. And get that feeling of like being like choked or mm-hmm. something, um, mm-hmm. you know, being constricting their airways. Mm-hmm. So that's what you know, I can gather and what we can gather for the, that's the culprit behind it is the, the ghost of the, the hangman who's doing that apparently, mm-hmm. which fuck that. You're not, <laughs> no ma'am. Only consensually. No ma'am. I mean, I, I don't, I, we I don't only have enjoy a bath- consensual role play. <laughs> yes. You know, you just got to get you some of that good, I, good. I'm going to tell you what, I don't have an issue with like, messing with me in the bathroom whatever i mean that okay but don't fucking try to don't try to at least let me breathe a fat a a fat kid gotta breathe Mm. like you You can bang on that's your thing see i feel like i could deal with that oh i'd be like you know what she's in been here before (laughs) certainly been here before uh could we just talk about it first, though? Like, could I get your middle name first before we, you know? <laughs> and then Katie moves into the end, Me becomes the a fucking. <laughs> she becomes a fucking, uh, you know, uh, what do you call them? A barkeeps or yeah. Uh, and then it's fine, and then everybody's fine. And that's that a healthy hit. relationship in 2019. Yeah, you know? <laughs> I'll be like that woman who married that pirate. Oh yeah, remember the ghost of the pirate. And you married she the choking great. ghost. Look her up on YouTube. <laughs> and you married the choking ghost. Yeah. So, despite all of this, though, there are two known um, benevolent entities. One being uh, the ghost of poor John Crowther himself, the last guy who was hanged for stealing sheep. And the other is uh, a woman by the name of Fanny Price. We love Hmm. a fanny, don't we? We do. We love a fanny. Fannies? What did we say about fannies that one episode? Fannies get shit that she takes care of your house. It's true. She will birth your babies. She'll be there for you. She'll get it done. Uh, Fannies are the Virgos of their time. For real. Well, and it makes sense because she worked at the pub, um, but she uh, is someone who died of consumption in one of the rooms and mm. uh, where she apparently still remains working diligently until this day. What does she like iron your like clothes for you? You wake up and That's everything's what I just was talking ironed about. and folded Room three, and fabulous. You get, you get the fucking ghost turndown service, yeah, man. man. She reads That's you Fanny a Price. Story. You get Fanny Price. She takes Ooh, care she of She rubs you. your back. While you're sleeping, like, why's it always got to be creepy things? Like, why can't you, why can't a ghost just like give that good like back scratch and that you need? I'm with fall you on asleep, that. You know. So this um, so this inn is um pretty uh famous. It's been on a couple of like paranormal like investigation shows. I think it's been on Most Haunted, um, and they do regular um like paranormal investigations there as well. Um, so I was, I spent my evening watching like different little like paranormal videos. Mm -hmm. Um, those are great. Yes. They're great. Um, my favorite is when they harass the ghosts. Oh yes. Just uh, never a good plan. No, it's not. There was one instance where, um, and I, I'm probably gonna like try to see if I can get this clip to post it on like our Instagram, but, uh, or at least get the audio clip, but there was a video of, um, these two men who were setting up and they weren't even talking, like they were just had their camera set up and, uh, something pushed the camera down or pushed it down and knocked it down. Um, which is also scary. Like, fuck. Cause we know equipment girl, girl, nah, <laughs> bitch ghost. I'm going to tell you right now. Don't touch my fucking equipment. Please don't. don't touch my equipment. I will fuck you up even worse. <laughs> Um, and then you can hear uh, an EVP after that. That's mm-hmm. really scary. So I'm mm-hmm. going to try to share that. 
um, I watched uh, um, one instance where this girl um, who went and apparently like when you go to stay there and do these like they just close down the bar and like you have like the whole place to yourself. Hmm. So the owners don't stay there overnight. Mm. the owners lock up and leave and if you're staying there in one of the rooms like it's like it's just you mm -hmm. oh so like it that's anybody if you rent a yeah. room there it's just yeah. you because the owners lock up and leave at the end of the night Interesting. they lock up and leave um how they trust it's people with all that Fanny. fucking liquor i don't know right <laughs> because damn Girl, we'd see some ghosts oh, like for and we would see sure. some spirits mm -hmm. we ain't talking about ghosts <laughs> no um, and so she was staying there. And so it was really creepy because just it so happened that she was the only one staying there, mm -hmm. her and the person that she was filming with. Mm -hmm. There were no other guests at the time. So she had the whole place all to herself. Um, and they actually keep a hangman's noose tied to that beam. That doesn't, that day. just seems like tempting, <laughs> you know? Yeah. She said, um, this is not fucking Walt Disney World. Like, get yeah. out of here with that. Yeah. Um, and a couple of other people have said that um, when they were walking around in the middle of the night, um, one person said that she heard some things and she had like a fire poker and she placed it by her bed. And then when she mm. went out and came back after a few, like after maybe about 30 minutes of walking around and like discovering things, the fire poker was placed back where it was. And mm. she said she remembered specifically leaving it there. Now she did say there was another set of guests that were staying there and like doing investigations at night. So she said it was possible they could have moved it, mm -hmm. but it still unnerved her nonetheless. She also heard um, as she was trying to sleep, she also heard, what sounded like someone choking outside of her room. Hmm. Now that might've just also been the guest getting it all next door. We don't know that either, True. but True. still she, um, Oh, and also the bathroom. She said she tried to open the bathroom door downstairs and she found that it couldn't be open. It wasn't locked and it would budge, um, but she couldn't get it open. And then she said a gust of cold air shot out of it. And then the door finally opened up. Um, and she said it unnerved her enough that she didn't go in it. Um, <laughs> that she just shut it, went back upstairs and went into her room. She doesn't claim to, she doesn't necessarily believe in ghosts, but she said that she just decided to stay in her room and didn't fall asleep until 5 a.m. <laughs> I'm not saying that I'm chicken shit, but I'm chicken shit. Uh, hey, I mean, I appreciate it. So, yeah, I would... Um, I would definitely be interested in shit, girl. If I could get to fucking uh, South of Wales, I'd go. Because it looks like a really cool pub. They also have a, um, since they're kind of like, there's lots of legend around there about, you know, the mountain and all of that. They also keep, um, which I thought this was really cool. The pub keeps what they call the Devil's Cup mm -hmm. up on their, um, on a, like a shelf on the mantle of the fireplace. Mm -hmm. And they keep it half filled with ale so that way, if the devil ever comes in the night, he'll have a drink. He'll have half a drink. <laughs> Bitch, that's just enough to make me mad. But still, I'm like, damn, y'all expecting the devil? I mean, Shit. let's not roll out the welcome map. Let's <laughs> just kind of... <laughs> but yeah, so... Cool. Well, that sounds like a very cool place. I think so, too. Like, if we got listeners in Wales, which I know we do, like... Let us know if you've ever been there. Yeah. Um, it has, uh, I believe, a or four out of- some pics. I believe it has a four out of five rating on TripAdvisor. Amazing. <laughs> Fabulous. Um, so, yeah. So, those are my uh, ghost stories for you. This I like time. it. It kind of reminds me of, uh, our episode today kind of reminds me of that Netflix show, um, Dark Tourist. Mm. Yeah. It was kind of like a, like a Dark Tourist- UK Wales type adventure. Yeah, I'm, I'm always it. really interested. So it was sort of like two different like ghost stories. Like obviously we have one that's a little more personal, a little less like um uh 
steeped in murder, I guess yeah. I should say. <laughs> but that just goes murder. to show you that, you know, people can have different experiences and that, right. you know, spirits and uh, paranormal things can manifest themselves in many different ways, whether it's, you know, something that is just a spirit that may be attached to something or, mm-hmm. um, and, you know, it may just be a simple uh, harmless tapping or poltergeist material Mm -hmm. um just annoying the shit out of you or you got shit that's actually fucking choking you and like putting fucking welts on your neck yeah that's terrifying to me yeah yeah so well that's just like some real some real fucking dark shit you know like we need to get about a metric ton of sage i was gonna like, say we, if we just fill that there, whole mountain valley up with sage i was gonna say if we do go there bring the sage i honey i will be in like a weave made of sage like <laughs> i'm not fucking around you know what i mean <laughs> i mean mr hangman and i can talk but like we have to we have to set some boundaries I, i'm gonna tell you what we i just said some safe words sir i'm gonna tell you what i would if I was an owner of a pub like that, don't you best believe I would play that shit up. I oh, totally. But to it honor- sounds like they are because they still have like the rope hanging from that like yeah. beam. It sounds like they are very much like into the whole like mythos of the thing, which is cool. Yeah, which is cool. So yeah. seriously, though, if you live in Wales, definitely send us pictures because that would be the food really looked cool. great. Like they oh, serve okay. food oh, there. Yeah. Yeah. I was look. Girl, Don't eat anything there. greasy though, because you're gonna need that bathroom. Yeah, and apparently the bathrooms stay cold. Um, <laughs> anyway, that's another thing I can't stand is a cold bathroom. A cold bathroom. Um, yeah. No, but yeah, I was scrolling through TripAdvisor and I was like looking at like, ooh, look at all these pictures of this food. This fish and chips look bomb AF. I'm like, hell yeah, let me go there. I don't even drink beer or ale or whatever the fuck you call it like that. You'd have a good time there, though. I would. I would. I can drink the ale for you. In fact, yes, you can. It's my people's gift. <laughs> it the is. The Scots are a proud people. <laughs> that is. That they are. Awesome. Well, uh, that's our episode for today, folks. So um, if you want to catch up with us on the social medias, uh, you can find us on Instagram at The Haunted Heart Podcast, on Twitter at The Haunted Heart. We're also on Facebook. If you search The Haunted Heart Podcast, you can find our closed Facebook group. If you request to join either ourselves or a member of our Murder Mod Squad, we'll approve your request, and then you can talk to all of the little demented Haunted Heart listeners just like yourself. Unless you are the ghost of a hangman. In which case, DM me. <laughs> uh, if you have a story that's related to any of the topics that we talk about on the show or something that you just think that we would be interested in and that's groovy, email us at the Haunted Heart Podcast at gmail.com and we may read your story on the air. And as we said at the top of the episode, if you want to leave us a little coin for the work that we be doing... Uh, you can find us on patreon.com slash the haunted heart. And we are truly appreciative of everyone's donations. Every cent from the Patreon goes directly back into the show um, so that we can keep churning out more content for you. For and you. speaking of more content, be sure that you are tuning into your podcast feeds on the weekend for Netflix and Kill. Mm-hmm. That is the mini episode where we sit back, chillax, killax. Is that a word? Maybe. Maybe not. Uh, We need to workshop it. We will. (laughs) Just like we do this fucking podcast every episode. Anyway, uh, and you can listen to us review uh, and rate and chill or kill uh, horror movies from Netflix. The best that they have to offer and the worst. It's very fun. It's very informal, very cool, very much talking about gabbing about horror movies with your friends. Uh, Check it out if you haven't yet. Uh, a lot of people are super enjoying it. Yes. As we have been told. <laughs> or they're lying to us. Who knows? Who knows? As we mentioned, we do have another uh, live meet and greet coming up in Chicago. Beautiful, sunny, breezy Chicago. We're very mm-hmm. excited. We're going to be at the True Crime Podcast Festival there uh, on July 13th. So if you are interested in attending, go ahead and get your tickets now. I do know that there there is like a set number of tickets. And once they're gone, they're gone. So if you are interested in attending, you can head to www.tcpf. That's T for true, C for crime, P for podcast, F for festival, dot com. You can pick your tickets up there and then let us know that you're going to be there. Give us a shout on social media. And even if you're not... Um, planning to attend the podcast. We'll probably 
be hanging out at a local bar somewhere later on that evening. So I'm sure it will be easy to find us. Yeah, maybe we'll find us a good uh, haunted bar to go to. Ooh, that would be cool. Yeah, we'll have to check that out. Yeah, we'll look into that. So. We shall. And speaking of checking things out, folks, it is time for our sign off. We wish you the best for this week. And you know the type of energy you got to carry into this next mm-hmm. week. You know you have, have to, to stay, stay spooky. spooky.